how extensive is, is the archives World War II collection? Is it one of the, the larger collections you have on, on a specific topic or a specific era? Glad you asked that question. The World War II collection that we have at the Delaware Public Archives is a significant collection that we have within the archives. We have over 10.4 million documents, over 800,000 photographs. The WW2 uh, artifacts that we have and materials runs the gamut. We have about 5,500 uh, photographs and fair amount of written materials on World War II. Some of it is that is on exhibit today, matter of fact. And I guess a lot of that is because those who were working at the archives at the time and, and the state government at the time uh, went to great pains to collect the material as the war was going on. Did, did that obviously make a, a, a large difference in having the kind of collection the state has at this point? It made a ma major difference. Uh, the state archivist at the time, Leon de Ballinger, uh, recognized during World War uh, II and afterwards that there was a need to collect this historic and significant materials. Um, the archives at that time didn't have a large compendium of materials from World War I, so he wanted to make that right and took a very strong interest in materials as it related to World War II, and that's why we have those materials with us today that are available to anybody that wants to come in and see them. I guess one of the more compelling ones is the memorial volume, which was put together immediately in the years after the war, a four-year project that uh, really kind of tells the stories of those who, who lost their lives during the war. The memorial volume is a very significant piece of the World War II materials that we have. Yes, it tells the story of over 800 individuals who fought in the war who lost their lives because of, of the various battles and materials. There's men in there and there's, and there's women in, in that uh, volume as well. But what that volume shows is uh, to get the information, uh, the archive staff made an effort to reach out to family members and to friends to write in and tell us about the individual. And think of how hard it would be for you to be writing about a lost loved one. Um, so we were very grateful for family members and friends to do that. And in some way it helped them lessen the feelings of loss um, of their loved ones to be able to memorialize them and put them in a, a, a format that they'll always be remembered. And certainly you look at, you know, from 1940s until now, we still have those materials and we're very proud to display those materials and as they, well. And they are very personal stories and they're, they're told when they were still very fresh. Absolutely, in the minds of, um, we have uh, materials from people that were engaged, that were planning on getting married after the war, about people's sons and loved ones and brothers. So you really get that sense of who these individuals were, what they meant to somebody, and their contribution um, to safeguarding our, 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 the, the war effort here in America. And you, uh, you also recently had an addition to the World War II collection that was just added that I guess kind of ties in in some ways to uh, that memorial volume in terms of it includes some oral histories and things like that that also bring some personal stories out. Can you tell us a little bit about that, that recent addition? We have a wonderful addition of materials that came to the archives in the, within the past two months. It's oral histories. We call it the Kitchener Collection. And it's oral histories of those individuals who have served in World War II. And you know, as the population ages out, it's important that you gather this information. The ability to speak about your history, personal, can mean a lot to the overall understanding of what happened in the big picture of that history. So we're very pleased to have those materials with us now. You mentioned the fact that because we're, we're starting to lose those who can provide firsthand accounts of what happened, uh, it's important to get what you can at this particular point. And how important is it for the, for the state to have already gotten a lot of that material? That not to be doing it kind of at the end of the, of the process, but having been doing it all this time and, and have it already in place. One of your most important aspects is of understanding history is really to do the oral history. For those people that participated in the event themselves, they can give you a different perspective. They can give you some anecdotal information that makes the history come alive. And is it important to continue? Certainly. Um, not just for war efforts, our Korean War veterans, our Vietnam veterans, our Iraqi 
uh, veterans, but for any other significant event in history. We recently had an exhibit that was related to desegregation in the state, and we talked to individuals that actually lived during the time of the desegregation, our African American population, and the stories and the feelings that they were able to uh, project and tell us are forever recorded, and people, it helps people understand a moment in time in their lives. A lot of this material, the World War II material, is, is online, in an online exhibit. Um, Tell us a little bit about how that, you know, that came to be and, and how you kind of selected what would be highlighted and, and what is a, a very comprehensive online presentation. It's always important. So our philosophy at the archives that we get this information and we present it. And not everyone can physically come into the building. So you're talking about your World Wide Web where this information is, is presented and people can view it for whatever reason they so desire. And that's what we constantly do. We're constantly digitizing our information, putting the materials on the web so that people can get a full grasp of what this archives is all about. As I said, we have over 10.4 million documents, over 800,000 photographs, and numerous other types of videos and recordings and books here. Come look at us, come visit us here, and come to the website. You'll get all your information about us there. Speaking of all those documents, when you were putting together the online exhibit for, for World War II, how did you make the decisions on, on what particular material to, to highlight uh, and, and what areas to highlight? We looked at a, a cross compendium of the types of materials that we had and then begin to look at subject areas of, for example, who were the Delawareans that actually fought? African Americans, women, people from Sussex County, Kent County, Wilmington, um, the whole geographic aspect. And then you begin to look at what were the supporting activities that occurred during that time, our farming industry, our whole agricultural um, environment that we have here, our poultry. And that's an important uh, aspect of the broiler chickens. They fed the services. We were one of the top uh, producers at, at, at that time. So, we looked at that. We had some people that were part of the war come and look at some of the photographs that we had here, some of the documents. What did it mean to them? And if I got one of those, oh my God moments, <laughs> I didn't know you had that stuff, that was in the exhibit. For you, is there a particular piece of, of the World War II material that, that stands out to you that, that maybe particularly resonates with you? One of the things that stands out mostly for me is we have a large compendium of World War II propaganda posters talking about the efforts. And these are in color. And usually when you think of materials that relate to World War II, it's in black and white. So this is a visual that gives you that projected uh, point of view of how things looked and some of the areas that were important as it related to propaganda posters. Um, for the materials and, and aspects of, of the war. You mentioned you, you've done some, some similar things with, with desegregation and such. Are you hoping that, that this is a model that will go forward for the archives in terms of presenting this type of material, uh, both at the archives and, and online as well? Absolutely. As I said earlier on, part of our philosophy is to give our information. We give the story. We tell what the information is. How people interpret that is the way they interpret it. Um, so it's important to highlight some of the materials that we have here to garner marketing and garner communication about what we offer here. This exhibit here will be up till probably the end of the year, and we're already in the process of, of working with our constituents and our staff to decide what other types of exhibits we're going to be coming up with in the future.